Hey everyone, and as you all know, when Challenger players smurf, they can win almost every single game up until Diamond, and many of you wonder, how? How do they carry these feeding toxic teams? Well, Challenger players have insane game knowledge and know how to play nearly every scenario. So today, we're going to run you through a few scenarios and test your knowledge to see if you would have made the same play that I did playing on a gold smurf on Ari. We're going to be covering a wide range of topics from laning to team fighting to macro, and the concepts will apply to almost any champion. Also, the full RA game can be found over at skillcap.com on our commentaries page. We upload a bunch of these every week so you can see how challengers climb out of ELO hell and what their thought process is in real time for every role. So be sure to check us out after this. Alright, let's jump right into the gameplay with our first scenario which is a pretty easy one. I'm 2-0 in lane right now and hard pressuring the Aurelion Soul I'm laning against. He's low health so I'm constantly shoving waves until he's going to be forced to take a bad recall or overstay and I'll kill him. I'm only level 5 so I don't have my ultimate. While doing this though, the enemy Elise is ganking me from Botside River. If we pause here, what would you do in this situation? Let's see what I do and listen to what I said. Lane's already won, so Elise is here, but it doesn't matter. She's dead anyway. So like Elise Elise is down. And uh, levels, she's very squishy. As long as she has items yet, and I have Ignite up. She's walking right at me. Alright, so this is one of those smurf moments. A smurf moment is a situation where most players wouldn't take advantage of the mistake the enemy team is making. The Aurelian Soul is really low and can't help Elise if she tries to gank. Elise is only level 4. So think of it this way. What if we just take Aurelian Soul out of the picture entirely and just act like we're laning against Elise? Would a level 4 Elise be able to walk straight at us in lane? Of course not. These kinds of plays are how smurfs always get leads in the early game. Any mistake by the enemy team is hard punished. Also, I could have done this on literally any other mid champion. Fizz, Orianna, Syndra, Echo, anything. Anyways, moving on to the next scenario, it's similar to the last one where I'm hard pressuring the Aurelion Soul again. I don't have Ignite and don't have my ult, but I have Flash. The wave is pushing to me because he has a cannon minion and I don't, so I could freeze here if I wanted to. What would you be looking to do in these next 20 to 30 seconds? Just like before, let's watch and listen to what I said while playing. Alright, now he's trolling. Now we want to look for an E-Flash, just for the blue buff, if he stays. Like that. See, I casted the E first and then flashed, and you buffer it so like as soon as you flash, it uses it. It's a lot harder for them to react to. Alright, so the important concept here is that I didn't look to freeze even though I had a health advantage and could deny him CS with the freeze. This is because freezing is when it's too dangerous to shove or you don't have enough wave clear to push before they get back to lane. But the most pressure you can put on is by constantly shoving like I am here. It makes enemy overstay a lot of the time, denies them CS, and lets you work on tower plating. Freezing is used a lot more in the early parts of the game when your wave clear isn't that high yet. For this next scenario, we have a very important concept when it comes to roaming. I'm coming out of base and this is what the scoreboard looks like. Look at the winning lanes and losing lanes on my team as the information is important for this next question. Also look at the minimap as the enemy Elise is hovering bondside. Now I head to lane and clear the wave on the tower and we see Aurelia and Soul ganking our top laner. That means both of our side laners are being ganked right now. Soul is top, Elise is bot. What should I do about it? Let's watch and listen to what my thought process was. I can look to roam top here to be honest because they're they're kind of overstaying. This day we can just kill them all. And I'm only roaming here because see Trinimir is actually winning lane. Yeah, they're trolling here. We fight. Go, go, go. Alright. Multiple important things to go over here. The first is how I clear the wave on my tower and clear the next wave before roaming. This makes sure I don't lose any CS and Soul loses at least one wave from this and it puts pressure on the tower. The big concept though is how I decided where to roam. A lot of players have this idea that they need to help their losing teammates. This is the complete opposite of what you want to be doing. Your goal is to get yourself fed so you can carry. If you roam to a lane that is losing, who knows if you'll win the fight? It would be very hard. But think about this. 
Chenmi and I are both winning lanes. We're both stronger than the enemy laner. So if I roam top for a 2v2, how is it possible for us to lose? We would have to be outplayed extremely hard. This is super important when it comes to roaming. If you roam to losing lane and die, your lead and the game are completely thrown. This is probably the number one way players throw their lead. All right, for this next scenario, let's test your mechanics a bit. I'm pressuring soul mid and have a big health advantage and fewer roams on me. If we pause here, our team is in a 3v3 fight at the dragon, Trinomir is heading top lane and I have two of them on me. What would you do here? First thing I do is alt over the wall towards my tower. I am purposefully kiting away from my teammates because if I bring these two over there, that turns the fight into a 4v5 instead of a 3v3. Let's pause again. Look at the situation. Think about what you would do next. The first thing you should notice is that I still have two alt charges left, meaning I can go in and out one more time. Then you should see that our Relan Soul is way out of position here because he's low health and he's not standing behind any minions. He has a false sense of security because his Fiora is behind him. This happens all of the time in lower elos. Players have their team near them and think they won't be killed. So I dash in, charm and kill the soul, and dash out with my last alt charge. Then bait Fiora into my team to kill her as well. This seemed like an obvious play, but the thing is, when coaching lower elo players or VOD reviewing, you guys let people get away with murder all of the time. The enemy team will be out of position and be borderline trolling and you don't punish. Alright, moving on to the next scenario. I'm coming from base and my team is trolling pretty hard fighting for no reason and without me there when I have most of our gold. If we look at the minimap, Kai says bot lane, Thresh is fighting 1v2 versus the enemy bot and river. I don't know, but it's obviously not good. What would you do here? Let's listen to what I had to say about it. Team's fighting, but I'm not like heading to this fight. I want to push mid first. This isn't even a one fight, so. Team's fighting, but I'm not heading to this fight. Doing this simple thing would change your win rate drastically. In low elo, all you guys want to do is fight. Any fight that breaks out, you just run straight to it. It's insane. Look at the bigger picture. What does this fight get for us? Nothing. My team is fighting for no reason. We have someone pushing bot working on the tower, so we shouldn't be fighting, and just look to push waves and pressure the map. That's what pushing waves does. As I go to push mid, the early soul flashes my charm and engages, slowing me with his rileys. Now, this is a different scenario. I'm not engaging on them, they are engaging on me. What do you do in a losing scenario where you're getting engaged on? A word we all know and have heard a million times, kite. In low elo, you guys either run or you fight, but in the middle of those is called kiting, damaging them while retreating. So I all down towards bottom river, using my abilities to damage them while retreating until I get to this brush. I didn't kite towards my tower because I'm trying to pull them away from it. If they chase me, they can't get the tower, but they can probably dive me under tower in a 3v1. Notice here, I don't use my last alt charge yet. I know they can't see me, and if they continue chasing, I can alt over the dragon wall. But I don't have an immediate threat right now. Then, Fiora starts heading through river to catch bot wave, or stop our Kaisa from pushing. Look at her level, she's level 9. Levels are a huge part of this game, and they give a lot of base stats. And if you ever have 2 or 3 levels on someone, like I do on Fiora, you should really never be scared of them. So, since I have Ignite, all of my abilities, and one alt charge left, I charm Fiora over the wall out of vision and one shot her with my Ignite and my last alt charge. So you see how I didn't use my alt to just run away? I kited when I was at the disadvantage in 1v3 until they stopped chasing, then went back to the aggressor when they were out of position. But now the enemy team is pushing mid tower down, so what would you do? This is a tricky situation. Yasuo is fed and his wind wall can really mess up my damage. But just like every other decision, you have to think about the bigger picture. What are we trying to accomplish here? What's the most important thing about this situation? We're trying to defend this tower. We're not trying to kill them. What will stop them from taking this tower? The minions. So I walk up and use my Q on the entire backline of minions, clearing them all. Now they only have three minions left on the tower, which won't give them enough time to kill it. Because of this, they start chasing me and it's back to kiting. I chunk Yasuo to half, but he gets in range to exhaust me, so now I'm in trouble. I continue kiting and get hit with Senna ult, which are pretty bad, but I charm Yasuo to slow him down and dodge the soul Q in Yasuo Tornado while running towards my Thresh coming out of base and just barely make it to his lantern. Alright, so this was a close call and easily could have been a huge throw as I'm worth 850 gold. This is another one of those smurf moments where most players would die here or just let the enemy take the tower. 
The only reason they could even catch me though was because Yasuo somehow got in range to exhaust me, otherwise it wouldn't have been close. It is important to note though, you don't have to push your limits like I just did to win games. If I gave up this mid tower, the game result would have been the same. High low players know their limits very well, so they go for high risk high reward plays. The next scenario is directly connected to the previous one though. After that close call, I recall and start heading down mid since the enemy team is sieging our mid tower. What's the play here? What would you be looking to do? You can always pause the video if you need more than the 5 seconds we give to think. Let's let the video play and listen to my thought process. Okay. We can fight this now though, they haven't reset, so. This is what we want right here. Oh, I can't see you. Oh. Stay on the wall so she can't get the vital. <sighs> we got the center too, nice. Should be a hit. So like what happened there was the enemy team overstayed big time in mid, and then my whole team was there. So I can just go in and force a fight. Alright, so this is a very, very common mistake in lower elos, which remember means anything diamond or below. The enemy team want to fight all the way back at their own blue when I was coming out of base before they jumped on me in mid. They didn't recall and spend their gold or anything and decided to siege mid. They had multiple people with low health, and since they didn't recall to spend that gold, it's just useless. They could have 10,000 gold, but it doesn't matter if it's not spent. So, since my entire team is there, I know I just needed to force a fight and we would easily win. I could have done this on any champion, Orianna, Diana, Echo, Talon, anyone. Anyways, moving to the next scenario, the enemy Yasuo is pushing bot all by himself. And if we look at the minimap, I have Volibear, Thresh, and Kai'Sa coming, while the entire enemy team is in mid lane. So I just work on clearing this wave while waiting for my team to rotate. We get an easy kill on the Yasuo, but the next part is where we test your knowledge. I start heading to the river and we see Elise here. Look at the minimap and analyze the situation and think what you would do here. The correct play is to look to hard engage on the Elise because she's completely split away from her team, caught in the middle of us. And because we got an early pick, it should be 4v4 while our Trindamir is pushing top. If we go back to when we were killing Yasuo, we saw Senna and Fiora coming down river. They weren't taking the long way around and can't be behind Elise in the tri bush. So I look for a charm and dodge the cocoon, and since the charm lands, I go in using my ult to dodge soul stun, but end up dying to soul because I was greedy with flash. This happens sometimes in lower elos where you can see the right play, but your team doesn't see it and you die for it. We all should have turned and went for the Elise and Soul since they were split off, but Thresh and Kai'Sa didn't notice. You can't worry too much about situations like these. If you know you were making the right play then it's fine, it's just unlucky. Okay, moving to the last scenario. I'm heading down mid, Baron is up, and Dragon is coming up in 30 seconds. The minimap is bugged, that's why you can't see it. Elise shows up trying to kill our control ward in bottom river. What would you be looking to do here? Let's let it play through and listen to the live commentary. We want to like defend our vision, so I'm walking out like this. Like, there's no reason to let her get our wards when she's when we're ahead. And so, this is something very important, especially in the mid game. If you're ahead, you don't want to let the enemy team clear your vision for free. Protecting our control ward here is important for giving us dragon vision control. If they don't have vision of this brush, it's dangerous for them to walk in this area when they can get hit by a charm or hook. But after that, I look to pick Yasuo and he windwalls my charm and my slow. Elise is getting chased down by Trindamir and repels over the wall. If we pause here, what would you do next? Soul is way out of position here and used his defensive ability, his stun. With no hesitation, I ult to him and charm him, which leads to us bursting him down fast and winning the fight. You might be wondering though, why wouldn't I go for the Senna? And how is Sol the one out of position? Well if we take it back, it's because we knew Yasuo was over there and we don't know who is in that brush with them. Elise just repelled to that side of the wall and I don't want to alt into the brush and face check three people and instantly die. Sol should be with his team, but he was alone on the side and those are the targets assassins take care of the easiest. Alright guys, so at this point, I've carried us to where we can get the infernal soul and the game is easy from here. That's going to bring us to the end of this video. Remember, you can watch the full game over at skillcap.com. We're adding a bunch of new commentaries every week. 
Also, with our brand new page that just went live, navigating to the commentaries you're interested in just got easier. With immediate insights for how hard the expert had to carry, what ELO type it is, and who the expert is. We'll be adding more features to this going throughout the next few days as well, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.